Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about um, this letter that uh, Christopher Columbus wrote. Uh, the name of this letter um, is Letter to Louis de Saint Angel. Um, I might be butchering that name, but um, he, he wrote the letter to Saint Angel, uh, who was a very rich individual uh, person who had connections with the crown in Spain. Uh, and, you know, he had a lot of money and a lot of influence. Uh, so he was very significant um, uh, to Col Christopher Columbus. Um, so that's the title, uh, Letter to Louis the Saint Angel. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we, you know, I'm going to summarize, give you guys an understanding of what, what is said within this work, uh, analyze it, uh, and then um, talk about... Uh, how this letter is significant today and how it, it, it sh helped shape society today, uh, which is really significant. And, and honestly, I think there are things that, you know, Columbus um, initiated that, you know, influences influences all of us today, uh, no matter where you live on the planet. Uh, before I go into this, though, please remember to leave a like, subscribe and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. I appreciate it. And uh, it's a great help. Um, so basically, let's talk about uh, uh, let's go into the summary. Um, so this this letter uh, of Christopher Columbus. I mean, I've never really talked about a letter like this before on this channel. I usually talk about uh, a short story character, uh, talk about fictional characters, you know, people that don't exist, people that are not real. But Christopher Columbus was real. He existed. Um, you know, he he connected the 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 new world, and I guess you can say the old world or the ancient world, what, however you want to say it. Um, I, I wouldn't say he discovered the new world because, again, even in this letter, he even confirms it that there are already societies and people and villages and, 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 and Indians or uh, people already existed here. They had, you know, families and, and, and ways that they ate and, um, you know, uh, ways that they, they communicate with each other, ways that they socialize with each other. They had... Um, leaders, kings and queens, and you know different tribes and things like that. Um, so there were people in the Caribbean. Um, you know, Christopher Columbus didn't just go to the Caribbean or come to the Americas and find a clean slate. People did exist there. Uh, you know, they had lives there. Uh, so from my perspective, I wouldn't say he discovered it. Um, and several, many different people have, you know, different opinions and ideas and even facts on who discovered it first. Uh, we can't be entirely sure um, or, you know, maybe somebody out there is entirely sure. And, and there's, you know, uh, factual evidence to prove that, uh, you know, at this recording, I'm just going to go what I have based in this letter and, and what I can prove from general knowledge. Um, so from general knowledge that I have right now, I, I know for a fact that, um, well, I, I can't say I know for a fact, but generally speaking, I know I'm going in circles here, but generally speaking, um, there's a lot of people that have claims of discovering the new world. Um, so again, I see Christopher Columbus as a connector, uh, not a discoverer. Um, so this is all significance. This is all important. So I've established that this is not a character. This is an individual, a human being that, you know, had a major role to play in, in human history. Uh, and, um, you know, he did a lot. So before I even, even talk about this letter, I mean, go into the summary again, uh, another thing I would like to say about Christopher Columbus is that, um, this letter before you, you know, before he get, gets into it or, or the, the general feeling that you get, the general sense that you get by just reading, uh, this, this letter at face value is that it's very upbeat it's very inspirational, it's galvanizing, it's telling you, you need to come to, to, to this place, there's, there's ports, there's, there's fertile land, there's gold, there's riches, I mean, he, he pretty much from my perspective, I feel like he's discovering heaven, and he's telling us, that, you know, the people here, they don't have any weapons, they don't have any defenses, they're, they're, they're naked, uh, they, they're scared of us, they think I'm a god, they think I'm from heaven, they, they will take anything you give them, if you give them broken utensils, broken bowls, whatever, they'll take it, 
um, I mean, he discovers like a, a rich land, a rich land of milk and honey where, you know, there's riches to be gained. Um, and just by reading this off of, of, of face value, you can see like this letter would galvanize people who are looking for money, who are looking to be successful, who are looking a way in which to get out of poverty um, in Spain and, and, and in other parts of, of the world. Uh, and and this letter, it's all just, just you know, glamorous and hopeful and, and wonderful. Um Pretty much, he pretty much says, I mean, he doesn't say it in text, but the feeling of this letter is like, you know, basically, if we told these people to bow down and worship up, worship us, they would, because they're happy with anything they, that they give you. Um, and, and, and knowing if you're, a, 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 you know, you love history, you, you, you know a lot about history, you know that when you're conquering uh, land, uh, you know that uh, Christopher Columbus's journey was not that... Uh, uh, easy, not that welcoming. I mean, yes, the people weren't um, hostile towards him when, when he got to the Caribbean um, in different islands, but still, they were afraid. They, they, they didn't just like, here I am, do whatever you want to me. That, that wasn't their general, um, uh, their general approach. Uh, so, you know, this letter really just makes it, it just makes it look like this is heaven over here. Come here. Spain can get get a lot of gold, get a lot of money. You know, it's all for the taking. There's there's no it's like honestly, it's like he made up a, a a list of pros and no cons. Like cons do not exist, cons are not here. What are cons? Forget about cons, throw them in the trash because this is just pros. I mean, just just make a ship, sail, get over here. This letter is just that's that's pretty much the the general feeling that you get from reading at face value. Now let's let's go into the content. Let's go into to what he says. Now first and, and foremost, he's writing this to Saint Angel. He knows um, the the queen and and king, um, the king and queen, queen and king. Um, it's it's, it's twenty twenty one. I mean, you know, um, the the king and queen of Spain. They're gonna they're gonna hear about this. They're gonna read it. They're probably going to read it. Saint Angel is is a, a person of authority. A person of power, a person of wealth, uh, a person that Columbus needs because you know he's he's thousands of miles away, and um, you know he's not in Spain. He can't speak to his investors, and um, um, he can't speak to his investors. And pretty much, Saint Angel is, is his supporter. Which you know, from the get go, from my mind, what I kind of feel about this, since you know America, United States. Uh, Canada and, and, and you know Western countries are known for economy, are known for jobs and, and, and wealth and businesses. Um, the first voyage of Christopher Columbus, if you really think about it as a business individual, it kind of feels like a business venture. You know, think about it. Columbus um, gets these investors, right? The king and queen, Saint Angel, and other people that contributed to his journey. Um, you know, ships, men, money, things like that. Um, a bunch of people who poured in money, who invested into his journeys, so he can bring back um, things of value, things of profit. Now, he wasn't going to the Caribbean. I mean, nobody in, the, in, in that world knew about the Caribbean and what was there. Uh, but they made an investment, just like how you know companies function today. There, there's investors, uh, there's people that, that hold stakes in, the com in companies in, in the United States and other countries. And they expect that company to, to uh, perform well. And if you think about it, it's like um, Columbus was like a, a Steve Jobs or a Jeff Bezos. He was like a startup, right? Colum like Christopher Columbus was like a startup who had this crazy idea of find finding new roots. And he found, you know, he stumbled upon a new world. And he had these investors that invested in him. And, you know, he created the apple of his day, which is, you know, the new, I mean, I, I'm stretching this out, but you guys kind of, I, I think you guys get what I'm trying to stay here. Um, you know, the new world was like the, the latest invention. Uh, Christopher Columbus's voyage was like the company that was being invested into. And St. Angel, the, the queen king of, of, of Spain, uh, you know, were those investors and they were pouring money into it. Um, so, I, you know, I'm going to say this, that the letter kind of feels like, you know, a lot of, 
uh, of butt kissing because it's like you know you know I'm very grateful I conquer these lands and in the name of our of our our, our 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 king and queen of our sovereigns you know these islands I'm naming them after you know our sovereigns it's all because of the glory of God and and you know we're spreading the Christianity I mean you know they're killing people and taking over their land and all that kind of stuff but you know we're doing it for Christianity we're doing it for God not for money you know don't think about that uh you know it's all um you know going towards that right so this letter it's it, it really shows you that you know maybe in some ways it even shows you that america was destined to be um about uh, uh business and finance because you know christopher columbus was i mean that the whole endeavor was, was pretty much a startup um um so you you know in the letter he goes on um, he's speaking very positively again, and he, he's he's telling them about the journey of, of how far he's going, the, the mileage or the distance, and, and he's not telling them, you know, I went this many miles down this coast and whatever. Um, he's using the measurements of that day, uh, and pretty much he's saying, here's, I found this island here, I found this island there, uh, I found, you know, all these places, the natives are scared of us. Uh, he tells he tells them that the natives are scared of the men and they think that some of them think that they're they're, they're angels and that they're from heaven. Um, it's very easy. There's no heartache. There's no hardship. Um, he tells in the letter he goes into detail about the ports and the rivers and the trees that literally you know are touching the sky. Uh, the people are practically naked and gold is everywhere. They don't know the value of gold. They're just throwing it around, using it for daily tasks. Um, the letter just goes into detail about how, um, you know, they're not battle ready. They don't have weapons, ammunition. They don't have anything. They don't have, you know, any think to to fight or to go to war they don't have any experience They're, they have these little boats for like you know fishing and things like that um i mean he does display a level of complexity in these early civilizations well not early civilization excuse me about that but the civilizations that he found in the caribbean you know they weren't advanced as uh you know the, the civilization in spain and in other parts of europe um, but, you know, he says, you know, they had leaders, they had, um, um, kings and queens of their own, uh, of their own, they had boats and they had ways to, to grow food and to get married and to have family. So maybe it wasn't that as, as advanced, but he pretty much confirms that these people had a way of life. They had their own society and, uh, you know, by and large, the, you know, there's different tribes and all that kind of stuff, but they all got along and, and, and in many ways, the way he describes it, it seems like harmony. Um, it seems like everything is perfect. I mean, the imagery, the, the green lush, lush forests and, and land and rivers and fish and, and all these beautiful descriptions that he gives. They're very, it's very vivid. It's very, it's heaven-esque. Um, just think about the Caribbean. The Caribbean is just known for the tropical region today in, in, in 2021. Um, think about it when there were, you know, there wasn't any pollution, no, um, there wasn't any poverty. It was just forests and trees and, and rivers and people, th these, these early people were just living off the land and, um, no, no, you know, it's just, they were just eating and food was growing everywhere and there was no, you know, you know, uh, excessive farming because these, these individuals, the way that Columbus describes it. They're living off the land. They're not killing themselves in farming. When, you know, the Caribbean was taken over and colonized, you, you had these plantations coming out of nowhere, and you're, like, literally de devouring the soil. Because now, when you think about plantations, you're not just making uh, food or growing food for the family down the street or your local community. You're growing food for, you know, Europe and and countries around the world so these little islands all the gold all the, the the soil was being abused in many places the people were being abused in many this is like going towards the time of colonization um you know i'm just saying that just think about the tropical the, the caribbean when it was all lush all green uh, the people were just you know farming for their daily you know food and things like that that's what columbus saw you know that's what he saw that's what was there, that people had food, they had their version of shelter, they had their version to exist, they had fishing, they had 
it was life and it was just fine and and the way that they, he describes it they were happy and they had food you know and they weren't worried about things like money and 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 things like that the way that columbus describes it again this is what is in the letter um and so you know columbus goes into detail after the the butt kissing to the, the to the to the spanish crown and to saint angel uh he really gives us this picture of this you know lush tropical islands um, and, and, you know, natives and, and people who are scared of him, uh, and, and he really paints a beautiful picture. And then he goes into Hispaniola. Uh, today, Hispaniola is Haiti in the uh, Dominican Republic, and the way that he describes Haiti in the Dominican Republic is, for me, um, you know, he describes it like how, you know, in the Bible, to describe, uh, like, God uh, gave the Israelites a, a land of milk and honey. That's, it, it's... Well, you can, well, Christopher Columbus, he talks about Christianity, so we know he's a Christian, so we know that he probably had an idea um, of, uh, uh, of you know, the Israelite story and the milk of a land of honey in Israel and all that kind of stuff, and he describes Hispaniola, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic like this, this, um, this, you know, the, the, like the promised land, like in the Bible, how God promised Israel, like the promised land. He describes Haiti and Hispaniola uh, in the Dominican Republic, um... You know, like, like, you know, the trees are touching the skies. There's literally piles of gold everywhere. And he says in Haiti and the Dominican Republic, there's piles of gold everywhere. And, and he's saying, like, that there's nightingales and beautiful birds and waterfalls and rivers. I mean, when you look at Hispaniola today in Haiti and the Dominican Republic today and the, and, and the poverty that exists there and how all the trees are gone, gone there today, it's, it's very sad. Uh, because the the Haiti and the, the Dominican Republic that Christopher Columbus talks about, it's this lush, prosperous, food food filled, tree filled, uh, um, place where and he tells us about like the natives and the natives pretty much have no worries because like the he says that the trees are pretty much are just you know machine gunning out food like the the for, the the, the um, the the forests and and the green the the wow what am I saying? He's saying basically he's saying the trees and the plantation there and and the food there is literally just shooting out of the the, the trees basically. He's saying like some trees are just growing stuff and foods everywhere and these people they don't have to worry about anything. I mean we know that it's heaven s because he says that these people don't have weapons. If you're in a society and there's you know, the people are walking around basically naked as compared to Christopher Columbus and, and his men. In Hispaniola, the people are basically walking around naked. There's food everywhere. They don't, they're not worried about money. They have gold lying on the ground. They're not even, they don't even care about it because, I mean, they're not fighting over gold. There's plenty of food. Gold's not really currency. It's just there. It's tropical. They don't have to worry about you know, the weather is, is tropical pretty much all year long, and food, gold, tropical weather, I mean, you don't even have to worry about sophisticated, you know, complex infrastructure, because, you know, the, and the thing, here's the thing, the thing that drives infrastructure in society is need, right? If the Caribbean that Christopher Columbus was introduced to, there's no need for, for you know, you know, there's no need for a lot of food, there's no need for a lot of shelter, the people are not going to feel a need to build it. So the Caribbean he was introduced to, the people were quite content with their food and, and their, their living circumstances because they were surviving and life wasn't stressful. Um, so basically, Columbus reports all of this. He writes all of this and, and how easy it is to go there. Um, and he says that, he pretty much says Hispaniola, um, Haiti, and the American Republic are just treasures that are just you know they're there all you have to do is is come and pluck and pluck it you know just come and take um that's what the letter is that's what it feels like that's the general sense it's positive it's hopeful it's here's treasure come and get it that that's what i get from it that's what the letter feels like and and pretty much um you know that's what he sends to saint angel that's what he sends to spain that's what he sends to europe and other countries in the old world um, and, and that's the letter. Now let's talk about um, 
you know, deeper meanings. Now, we know it's bloody. We know that um, what Christopher Columbus describes is is not what really happened. Uh, we know that his men came with weapons. They came ready to fight. They came ready to... Um, I mean, they were going to the Indies. That was the original destination, but they found something totally different. Um, and it was theirs for the taking. Um, because, I mean, the, the people of Hispaniola, the people of the Caribbean... They had no weapons. He says this in the letter. They had no, nothing to defend themselves with. So what are you going to do? And they're, you know, the people are also practically naked. So you have a naked man with, I don't know, a staff facing a man with swords and, you know, ammunition. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, how how do you defend yourself? Um, so it was, it was honestly theirs for the taking. Um, and... Pretty much, we know about um, the Christopher Columbus's men. They wanted women of these natives. They wanted the natives to offer them women uh, so that they can sleep with. Um, you know, it got bloody. Um, you know, they they saw themselves as you know higher, and you know they can conquer these savages. And um, you know that's what happened. And you know, if you're a, a, um, a reader of, of history and, and you indulge in history, you know about the rapes and, and the fighting and the bloodshed, you know, and the slavery and colonization and everything that happens in slavery. So I'm not going to go into that. Uh, but we know that the letter is honestly, I feel like the letter might even be ironic because like you see saying like, all of this is perfect. No struggle, nothing, no, no bloodshed, you know, everything is perfect here. Uh, but it's, it really wasn't. I mean, for the people, for those natives, it really wasn't. I mean, Christopher Columbus even, like, makes himself look very good. He's like, you know, my men try to take advantage of these natives and these Indians and these people of Hispaniola. My men try to, you know, take their women and take their gold. But I'm like, you know, I'm Christopher Columbus. I am a Christian. You know, I, I, I tell them to do what's right. You know, when I see them trying to, to swindle them... You know, I tell them, don't do it, and, and, and I make a fair trade, because I am right and just. Um, you know, Chris, that's what Christopher Columbus does, and that's that's the, his tone of voice, right? That's his tone of voice at, at certain points within the letter. So he's saying, like, I'm, I'm just, we're treating them right. You know, we're going we're gonna to teach them about the Bible. Um, again, I'm not making fun of the Bible or Christianity. I'm a Christian myself. Um, it's just people have used Christianity to... Um, you know, to, to take it to their own ends and, and do what they will with it and, um, and, and and use it to gain money even. So, you know, Christopher Columbus is not above that. Uh, and, and um, you know, this letter, you know, it doesn't talk about how, you know, his men wanted property, they wanted land, they wanted gold. It was all about a lot of greed and want and wealth. And um, they were there for the taking and the people were there. They were willing to give because, I mean, they had an abundance amount of food and and. and um, land and, and, and trees and all the things you would want. And, I mean, some of these Indians and these tribes freely gave to Christopher Columbus because uh, he gave them stuff that they didn't have and they were very fascinated by it. I mean, he even says that, Christopher Columbus says that you can give them a broken bowl and they'll still take it and be amused by it because they've never seen it before. Um, and when you're a native, you're not used to... Uh, um, I guess the, the the construction of society and civilization. I mean, if they give you a knickknack, I mean, you could amuse yourself with it and, and just take interest in it. Um, so, again, to recap the analysis, it's not the letter. Everything it says that's not what happened. Uh, the people, you know, in, in honesty, there you know there was rapes, there was conflict, there was fights, there was bloodshed. Um, you know, the people weren't giving their women away. Uh, these natives were not giving their wives and, and daughters away to, to these um, uh, conquerors and colonizers. Um, you know, in history, we know from history, it was not that simple. Um, so, it's... I see this in, in several different ways. If you see Christopher Columbus's voyage as a startup, a business, um, investors invested, the queen, the crown invested... Um, St. Angel invested, he found a new invention, the new world, um, you know, he took advantage of what was there, there was no gates or locks or doors or, or defenses, so it was free-taking because they had the power, they had the might, 
uh, and and everything that's in the letter that's not truly what was really there. That's not truly what um, happened, um, and um, it, it really makes you think about um, you know the world we live in and how it can be impacted. Um, it really makes you think in um, and what what can happen to us. Uh, to make us, you know, hunger for money and wealth and power and things like that. Uh, so that's very significant. That's extremely significant. Um, and it's something we should always, you know, we should take, you know, we should be wise of that. Um, in terms of how this impacts us today. So this is even a deeper, deeper analysis of this, right? Um, from my own perspective. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm not a analyzing this as a teacher would. It's more of my perspective and what I see has the impact it has on the world. Um, I think that, you know, without Christopher Columbus, um, the world would be very different. I mean, it, it would probably take in several, um, you know, decades for the the connection of the new world and old in the in, in the old world to become a thing. Um, now I can't for certain say that the same thing would have like I, probably the same thing would have happened because I mean you have these Europeans and people from the old world that want money and gold and things like that, and people from the the the, the new world that are just living life in the Caribbean taking it easy because I mean they had food and and things to survive. There wasn't a massive need for stuff. Um, and that's why a lot of the Caribbean is extremely poor today because they were stripped of everything. Exactly what Columbus told them to do, that's what happened. He told them to come and get. Spain came and get. Countries all around Europe came and get. Um, you know, England, Britain, France. Wow, I just said England and Britain like they were different things. Scratch that. Britain came, France came, um, Spain came, and everybody in Europe literally just, you know, came, and from Haiti to the American Republic to every other island in, in the Caribbean, in the United, in the lands of the United States, you, you know, from history and the discovery of, of America, the United States, and all that kind of jazz, everybody came, and everybody took gold, trees, food, land, they came and they took. And all it would take is a Google search to see how poor some countries in the Caribbean are today. Because literally, it was like if somebody went into your house and like ripped out your carpet. I mean, they just, honestly, that's pretty much, like, honestly, that's perfect. That's exactly what happened. Because, I mean, the trees are gone. The, the grass is gone. I mean, there's some Caribbean countries, there's no grass. So, I mean, you know, the grass is gone. The trees are gone. And... Yeah, that's that's what happened. Um, and and you know, it, several different countries would be very different if it wasn't for that um, and what took place with Christopher Columbus and his voyages. Um, so that makes you think about the world in different ways and and, and the power that that greed has and money has and and the search for need for stuff because this all began with. A search for spice. And this is my joke. I'm going to tell you guys a joke before I end this, right? Columbus was... Originally went on his journey for spices um, and materials. He went to Car the Caribbean. I mean, the Caribbean is known for spices. Um, and he found spices. I mean, I guess he achieved his original... Um, his original watch... I mean, he didn't get to the Indies, but I mean, I guess the Caribbean, in terms of spices, that, that's a pretty much, that's a great place to go for spices. Um, so, I mean, my joke here, I mean, I'm not a comedian, but my joke here is that um, spicy foods ruined it, ruined everything. I mean, for people who are from the Caribbean, it's your spices that, that, that got you, you know, it's your spices that, 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 that made it all go left, you know. Uh, if we had bland food, you know. If we had bland, like, I mean, if we went bland, it could have been a different endeavor. It could have been a different endeavor. But um, that's my perspective. That's what the letter is about. That's what, that's the spark um, that started the colonization, the wars, um, all the wars in the Caribbean, uh, revolts and, and conquerings and defeats and 
everything with the United States and things like Louisiana Purchase and Indians and fights with Mexico and, and, and American Mexican War and, and the, you know that's pretty much this connection this connection of Christopher Columbus joining these two worlds that was the spark that set it all off he didn't discover it he connected it and we have the world we have today that's everything I had to say uh, please remember to leave a like subscribe and or comment uh, and I'll see you guys in my next video.